Okay, people of God, this video is entitled, Three Strikes, You're Out. And I know in some cases, you can't even afford one. But, you know, I believe in giving people a fair chance with dealing with them. But in most cases, if it's a really bad situation, if they do something two times, they're going to turn around and do it a third, okay? This is what I have learned. So, I want to share this testimony with you. It's going to be three different cases, okay? But I'm going to tack one on at the end because it came after that. I had went to Firestone to uh, have some work done on my car, okay? So I took my key off the keychain. And when I left there, you know, I went to the gas station, you know. And I went inside and, you know, these two young ladies came in, beautiful black young girls, okay? I'm thinking anyway, <laughs> And I happened to say something to them about how they were dressed. You know, I let them know they were beautiful. Okay? And before you say, well, you shouldn't be saying nothing to nobody. The Bible said preach the word in and out of season, okay? When they want to hear it and when they don't. You know, because I was trying to be as nice as I could be. But you know how some people are. They real hyper. Or, you know, they just don't want nobody to say nothing to them. So... She texts her mother, I guess, you know. I didn't know she was doing it at the time. So her mother come in, you know, looking like she all upset. And, you know, and as I began to engage her in conversation, you know, we pretty much came to the same conclusion, you know, like, you can't say nothing to these young people today. And I told her, had I known they were going to act like that, I wouldn't have said two words to them. Because, you know, I don't want to sing in public, you know, and get kicked out of places. I don't like that. So I guess it wasn't good enough for one of the daughters, okay? So evidently she either texts or calls someone else that was with them, right? Unbeknownst to me, by this time, I'm in my car, sitting down, trying to put my key back on my keychain. And this guy approaches my car to the left, where I'm sitting at. He said, uh, did you say something to that girl on the inside? I said, yeah. I said, but that's over and done with. He gonna say, well, you ain't have no business saying nothing to her. I said, well, let me tell you something. As a man, you don't have no business accosting me as a woman. So get out of my face, okay? And he kept running his mouth, and I told him again, but this time I raised my voice a little higher. I said, get out of my face. So when I said this, he spat on me, and he went in the store, okay? Now... The thing is, when I look, I like I couldn't see like gobs of spit. Uh, uh, spit. It must have been sprinkles. All right. And let me tell you, when he did it, it was like I drew a blank. Okay. I mean, I can remember what I did with my keys. I thought I put them to the side. I was scrambling for my phone because yeah, my brain had became like scrambled eggs at this point. All right. <laughs> and. Before I can really get into my phone, he's coming out of the store because I guess he went in there and told him what he did. And it was like, man, you know, you know, you shouldn't have done that. So they was trying to hurry up and break fast. So I jumped up out of my car and I went after him. OK. And I gave him a few words. OK. I let him know for one that he was a coward. And I said some other things that I shouldn't say. OK. Because I'm telling you, I ain't got there yet. All right. He spat on me. And, you know, people were saying, call the cops, because I was asking God, I was like, well, Lord, you know, after it was all said and done, should I, you know, should I call the police? God didn't say nothing. It's as though he was saying, girl, it's in your court, all right? And he knew how it was. I was like, Lord, I really don't feel like going to court dealing with this. I said, well, okay, Jesus, they spat on you. This one is on you, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, some of you people, the draft was created for y'all. You young people, y'all ain't got no sense. So, uh, some of you, not all. So, getting back to it, because once I went after him, you know, they were laughing. You know, he mocking, eh, right? And the girl that was with him was laughing. So, I decided to go behind the vehicle and get the license plate. And it's at this point, you know, they want to cry foul. Now, why you crying foul? You know, it was funny a few minutes ago, right? So I told her, he going to be your judge because you're living in sin anyway. 
And it got so bad that even the mother got carried away, as they say, with their dissimulation, right? Mm -hmm. She want to join sides with me. You know what I was saying in my head. And your daughters are going to be your judge. All right? We're judges. Okay, so that was case number one. May the 11th, I said, all right? Now, the next one that took place, it could have been like, um, maybe July, early July. I had went to the mall, okay? And at this point, I was leaving. I was in my car, you know. I was getting ready to back out. You know, I had, you know how you, when you hit the thing and the brakes, when you put the car in a position and you just back a little, but you stop because I wanted to make sure there wasn't nobody behind me. So when I looked, I saw this young lady moving and she had a kid with her. Okay. And then I saw a guy coming behind her, but I didn't see the kid with him. Okay. But I did see him, you know, and I told her, I said, well, why didn't you tap on the car or something? Because honestly, God knows I did see her because she looked like she was upset. So, you know, they walk on past, right? And then I just, you know, back out and go around. And I just tell them, I say, next time I said, uh, make sure you say something. Because, you know, the last thing I want to do is hit your child. And I'm quite sure nobody else wouldn't want to hit them either. Because that's not something I could live with. Okay, that's the kind of stuff that would put me on suicide watch. And he told me, he said, shut up, you old B. And I told him. You disrespectful bastard. I said a draft was created for you. And it was nice for once to see somebody else's face look like scrambled eggs. Because that's exact that is exactly what the woman who was walking with him face looked like, okay? <laughs> okay. Case number three. This was on July the 17th, if I'm correct. Or the 18th. Okay, so uh, I was having some trouble with the uh, Freon in my car. And yeah, it was this guy I never ever really got along with him, you know. You know, the, you, you people that go to church on Sunday, some of y'all could be something else. And he was at an age where he should have known better because he was up in his 70s. You know, he always been hostile to me. But I thought, okay, you know, he's had time like a year, you know. Maybe he'll act a little better now, right? So, you know, I take the car over there, and he said, well, you need some Freon. He said, go in the store and get some. I said, I have some at the house. So I, I went home and got the Freon and came back. And then when I came back, he in his feelings, okay, because he messed all over my last car, too, okay? It's not that I had to go to him. It's just that I would have had to take a long drive to go to where I needed to go, right? And I didn't feel like driving up there. I just felt like, well, he's close to something simple he could tell me, right? As usual, he showed his natural born black behind. And he said something to me that was so unconscionable. Yeah, y'all. I cursed him out. Mm-hmm. Because, see, we got to be careful in this last day. Because, see, the devil is trying to steal our crown. And this is why I'm saying it. You know, in, in about the whole three years of me knowing him, I never did that. But like I said, what he said was so bad that he really hated coming to him. Okay, so this happened on, I think, July the 18th. And so I was asking God, Lord, what am I doing so wrong? You know that people are treating me like this. Okay? After that situation with him. And on July the 19th, that's when we had that blackout. Okay, right? cell phones, computers, and this thing was fell all the way down as far as Hawaii, right? The airplanes were grounded. Y'all need to watch that movie called Leave the World Behind because it showed the exact same thing except for the blackout took place on the East Coast, all right? There was civil war, and then America got bombed. Now, we got all these storms coming in right now, right? Racing this way. I don't know what's going to be the trigger, but so far, it looks like it's coming, though. All right. So, as I said, after that right there, that's when we had that blackout the very next day. 
So I realized it wasn't so much as a problem with me as it was with the people I was dealing with, okay? Two of them didn't even know me, okay? But this man is older than me, and he should have acted like he had more sense. But you know what? He was hostile to me and towards the gospel. No matter what I said, you know, he would go to church, lie, you know, he didn't care. And right after that, I guess maybe about a week later, I was heading out my door, you know, basically skipping out the door. You know, it was going to be a good day for me. You know, because my neighbor has a habit of coming out when I come out the door, like she does it intentionally. You know, and I really don't like talking to her because my relationship with her has never been good. Okay. You know, she has a lot of mouth. She just say things that are no profit, you know. And I, I don't like dealing with her because, see, I'm about waking up our people. You know, we got two different mindsets. So I walked out, skipped out my door. And when I realized she was coming out, I came back in for a minute, you know, hoping like, okay, well, she's going to go back in the house. No, I don't know. She thought I was going to come out there and sit down or whatever, but I was going somewhere. So I came out and walked past her, you know, and, uh, went up to my car and when I, and as I was walking towards the car, she said to me, why did you call the police on that woman? You ain't have to do that. I'm like saying to myself, what in the world is she talking about? So I called another neighbor. I said, well, did the police come out here last night or something? She said, no, not that I'm aware of. And the only thing my mind could go back to was something that took place about a year ago, people of God. Okay. Mm. With me and another neighbor. And the crazy part was, okay, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> So I was going down to the trash can to take out my trash. And I had my flashlight because it was nighttime, okay? Yeah, it toggles, it do whatever, okay? So we have a roundabout down here where we live at. So she was coming in the curb as I was walking towards my house back home. Now, how are you going to assess something properly when you come in the curb? And she going to say, are you flashing your flashlight in my house? When she gets out of the car, jump out the car. I'm like saying to myself, here I go again, what are you talking about? Okay, the kind of housing we living in, I'm like saying to myself, if I rob you, trust me, I have to turn around and go back and rob you again. This is what I'm saying to myself. It ain't like you the president of the United States. You know, if I'm in bad need, my best bet is to go down to the bank and rob them. Go out big, at least maybe I'll get away with something. But I ain't gonna get away with nothing fooling around with her, right? So guess what she does? She called me a B. Strike one. Okay. She turns around, you know, because I told her, I said, you need to get your house in order. I got my house in order. I said, no, you don't, because if you had your house in order, you wouldn't be out here messing with me. So she called me a B again. Because, you know, the first time I'm thinking, I got, I don't know what's going on. Maybe you had a bad day. Second time, you know, you're looking at a person like, all right, now, girl. Okay, and at this point, I gave it back to her because I wanted her to see. I said, no, I'm not the B. I said, you're the B. Okay? She proceeded to call me a B again. I don't know. Maybe I could have told her again. I said, no, I'm not the B. You're the B. So it's at this point, because what I say, I believe in the three-strike rule. I said, okay, it sounds like you want to do something to me. And if I let this slide, guess what? You're going to continue with something else, and I'm not going to deal with it. But guess what? Now, this neighbor that's living next door to me, who only been living here for two weeks, when the cops pull up, what she do? She runs out the house and runs straight over to her house, act like she don't even see me. And then she come back and walk past me again, act like she didn't see me, and she goes in her house. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, I call the police because I'm like this here. I got my degree in my back pocket. I work hard for it. You know, I don't know. Maybe you living your life by the seat of your pants. From what I could see, she was. And, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to mess that up fooling with you. And that's why I call the police. Because what you got to understand, some things can escalate, blow up, and then they'll try to make you look like you was the one that started the argument. All right? So, getting down to this neighbor here next door, back to her again. So, that situation had to deal with this one over here, I'm thinking. And I'm like saying, first of all, it ain't none of your business. The Bible talk about being a busybody meddling in other people's affairs, right? It was none of her business. 
So, guess what? She turns around and call me a B2. All right, this was about maybe one or two weeks ago. I didn't call the police on her because she only did it once. But it was at this point I said to myself, I'm done with you, okay? I mean, I've been putting up with all your little snide remarks, slurs, you know, trying to set me up and get me in trouble. But I said, once you call me a B, I said, I'm done. And as I said, God already let me know that she hated me. You know, it don't matter what you do for some people when they down and out. They still going to turn on you. They turn on you. They still going to hate you. Okay. So, like I said, I wanted to share that testimony with you because, you know, I really thought I was doing something wrong. And like I said, she was the icing on the cake. So, people of God, you know, the Bible talks about them birth pains, right? And that's what I was seeing these things that I was going through as birth pains because it's like they're coming closer and closer and closer together. All right? So, I'm telling y'all, get yourselves together, be strong, and don't let nobody steal your crown, okay? Okay?